Good morning. I hope you're having a good morning. Mine's been rather interesting already, but I'll save you the gory details. <laughs> it hasn't been bad. It's just been interesting. That's my key for, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a good morning, and I hope you're having a good week. Man, what is today? Today's Thursday already. This, this month's almost gone. It's already the 20th. That's 11 days left in this month. Wow, where did July go, right? Whew, man, it's almost gone. It's almost August time for kids to go back to school. I and uh, I mean, I've had I've had a good summer so far. I've had the, my grandkids here. You see some of the silly videos uh, Kyrie and I've posted the last couple of days. We've just had lots of giggles and and lots of fun. And you know, those things just really enrich life, right? It's just the good stuff that you just want to cherish and hold on to, right? So uh, anyway, so that's been good. And I hope, you, I hope you've had a good summer. I hope you're ready for school now. You know, everything starts shifting this time of year. We start getting, we're going to start getting settled back into routines and or different routines and kids go back to school. People move a lot over Labor Day trying to get settled in a new job, things like that. It's just kind of crazy things going on this time of year, right? But but, but I like the settling of the fall. Everybody starts going, oh, summer's over. Now we can relax because it's just busy because we get to get outside more. It's not it's not a bad busy. It's just we're busier. People are doing vacations, things like that, right? So lots of life going on. You know what? We're going to have life going on as long as we're breathing. This is a thing to be thankful for, right? We have life going on. And and that doesn't mean it's bad things. It, it can be good things. It can be in-between things. It can be exciting things. It can be, oh my gosh, things. It can be a lot of different things. There, there's a lot of emotions that, that make up a day, that make up a week, that make up a month, that make up the years and the decades that we get to spend in time, right? And so, uh, but there's a lot of things that make up this thing we call life. And it, and and there's emo all these emotions that go every single day. So I was looking at this scripture in Peter today, and what I was looking for was that, that the last part of the scripture, okay? And it says this, that God will uh, perfect us. That would be mature, help us grow, right? Uh, establish us. That's a good word. Make us solid in him, right? Strengthen us. That's good. These are all things God's going to do, right? Uh, let's see. He, actually, Peter's kind of praying this thing. May the God of grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ. I'm leaving out a phrase on purpose because I don't want to get to it yet. But his prayer is may God perfect you, mature you, establish you in him, of course, strengthen you, and settle you. And we're in that, we're coming into that season where we'll start getting to be a little bit more settled, right? Things start closing down, the, you're not going to be, the tourism the, the industry starts winding down a little bit, things like that. Things aren't open as much, but he is, we're going to settle. We want to settle in him, right? That's where we want to be when we sit. When we sit down with our coffee and it's fall and we go, whew, summer's over, we want to be settled in him. But there's this other little phrase in this verse may almost takes away from all of that if we're not careful so let me read the whole verse here i'm in first peter 5 10 but may the god of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by christ jesus here's that phrase after you have suffered a while perfect you strengthen you establish you and settle you to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. I was like, can we just take that phrase out and act like it's not there? You know, because he, he's praying. I mean, it's in the middle of a prayer he says that. But he, if we remember, when we look back at the first of Peter, he's writing to saints who have been scattered. He's writing to saints that have have been persecuted, right? Uh, to those who are going through a really hard time in the church, you know, the church is new, and it's not widely accepted by the religious community, for sure, because they didn't ever quite accept Christ, the the Sadducees and Pharisees. So there's a lot of turmoil going on in the middle of a whole lot of good stuff. And isn't that just life, right? I mean, not that, and we, and we don't know persecution to this degree, of course, but isn't life just about there's really good things happening, and there's some really hard things happening all at the same time? You know, you don't, it's not, and, and sometimes there's seasons where it just seems like there's one thing after another, and you're going, oh my goodness, when will this ever let up? And then there's other seasons that's going, this is just really, this is good, this is all right. But it, it, a lot of times it's kind of a mix of both, right? We've got some really good things going on. And then we got some really difficult things going on all at the same time, right? And so, but in the mix of all of that, 
God is still going to perfect us, mature us, establish us, strengthen us, and settle us. How? Well, we're going to stay connected to him. The whole thing is no matter what's going on today, whether it's all really, really good, it's an exciting day, you know, going back to school, maybe I've seen several parents, their their kids are going to boot camp, uh, you know, their the parents are at uh, OU or someplace getting their children, their adult sized children <laughs> checked into colleges and, and orient, or freshman orientation. And there's a lot of cool things happening this time of year for a lot of families, right? I know, I know, uh, one of, uh, Renella's really good friends just became a grandmother. How did that's scary, right? But, but there's good things happening. And at the same time, if we look at our news feed, which I don't look at it very often, right? But if we look at it, there's some really troubling things going on. You know, there, there, there's there's so many issues that are have just become a part of our world that are saddening, troubling, disheartening, and very difficult to deal with. So we've got all of this mix all at the same time. But you know what? That's no different than when Jesus walked on this earth. Right? There were a lot of really good things going on and a lot of really hard things going on at the same time. And it, it, so the mix is always there. What we want to do is in the middle of suffering, in the middle of the good times, in the middle of the difficult times, in the middle of the easy times, we just want to stay connected to God. And that's where we're going to find that soul peace. That's where we're going to find that, that anchor for our soul when we need it. That's where we're going to find hope when we need it. That's where we're going to find true love and acceptance when we need it. And we need that all the time, right? And we're going to find that we are become mature when we stay connected to him. We'll find that we'll become established when we, when we read his word and memorize it and start applying it to our lives and, and, you know, the washing of the water of the word, Jesus said, you know, making us clean, cleansing our minds minds, giving us some, an anchor to hold on to every single day, we'll become more established in him by staying connected to him. So that's my whole thing today is let's just stay connected to him because we don't have to sit down with a checklist and go, okay, let's see, is he, did I see him perfect? Was there anything, what did he do to strengthen me today? What did he do to establish me today? Or what did he do to, to, to settle me, to get, to, to ground me back to him today? No, that's on us. We just got to stay connected and as we stay connected to God, stay in his word, stay in prayer, fellowship with other believers, as we stay connected to him first, ultimately, we'll begin to see these qualities. See, remember the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians? Let's run over there real quick. How long have I gone? Okay, I'm good. In Galatians uh, 5, it says the fruit of the Spirit uh, is, let me find it, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is Love, joy, peace, there's our term, right? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But see, fruit doesn't just, you, you can't make a plant have fruit. You can't go out there to a tomato plant and, and pull a tomato out and make it bear fruit, right? And that tomato plant isn't out there groaning and grunting and, and straining to have a tomato Oh, we're going to have a tomato today. No, what happens is when the elements are all right, the, the the plant will produce fruit. When you have the water, when the temperature is right, when the, the sunlight is right, an orange tree is just going to make oranges naturally. A banana tree is just going to grow bananas naturally. A tomato plant is going to grow that fruit. The fruit comes naturally without the strain and the stress, right? Now, that doesn't mean that the, that the plant doesn't ever have any stress. It, right now, we've been in a heat wave and the plants are a little stressed. Now, we're going to get a break and they're going to really come on here pretty soon, right? But in the middle of that, the fruit that comes from the indwelling spirit of God in us is just going to happen naturally. We're going to look up one day and realize we love people. Wow, how did that happen? We'll look up and realize we have more compassion toward our fellow uh, humans, you know, our neighbors or our friends or you know whoever we come in contact with. We'll realize we have compassion. We'll go, where did that come from? I didn't even like them yesterday, right? And, and that's because it's a fruit that grows because the Holy Spirit is living in us. And that Holy Spirit living in us is going to, that fruit is the natural byproduct of the elements 
all being perfect. That means you're watering your soul with the word. You're you're fertilizing it with prayer. You're you're conversing with God and in relationship with Him. And so the fruit is just gonna grow. You actually can't stop it. You, you won't even know it until it's there, and you go, oh, there's an orange. Oh, <laughs> there's an apple. Oh, a tomato. Right? Because those things will just will begin to grow in you and in the middle of all of that then you'll find yourself here in first peter where it says you'll find yourself becoming mature you'll find yourself being more established you know one of the coolest things about learning the word is is when something happens good or bad even when i'm watching a movie sometimes i think of a scripture when something happens i'm like oh no no God's not giving me a spirit of fear right or what time i am afraid i will trust in him and i don't watch scary movies don't get that wrong but the when you put that scripture in, it comes back up. It's there for you to use. The Holy Spirit will remind you of that scripture, that, that one that you've grabbed as an anchor for your soul, right? He'll establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. And it's not a checklist, and it's not a, you don't take a life's measuring tape out and say, how much did we get settled today? How much did we get established today? How much did we get, you know, grow? How much did we grow today? No, it just is going to happen as a byproduct of fellowshipping with him. And it's the same way with peace. When you fellowship with Him, and you let that peace reign, you have the benefit of you have the, all the benefits of the kingdom. It's just a matter of finding them, right? It's a matter of fellowshipping with Him and reading the Word and and growing in your knowledge of God and growing in His grace, and that these things will begin to happen, even though you don't see them, or you don't feel them, but you'll begin to realize you're more settled in Him. You're more established in the word and it'll it'll become so much a part of you it's just ingrained and that fellowship with him will just remind you help you remember that you have everything he promised and he's going to establish it in you as you trust him and then peace will come grace will be there mercy will be there and you'll begin to see it operating in your lives right all you got to do is stay connected to him and then you can peace out have a great day I'll see you bright and early in the morning.